Hey guys, I'm Stephanie. And I'm Tiffany. And we're Sisters, Sisters of, of the, the South. South. Yay, we're back. And I just wanted to thank every single person that came and watched our show in the past couple of weeks and subscribed. Uh, Y'all have really pushed us up there in the subscriber session of YouTube, and we're very excited. So thank you so much for sharing your time with us. We really appreciate that. Yes, thank you. We're so excited about that. Uh, we want to keep giving you the con content that you want. Um, so what we're going to do is every other Monday, we're going to have a missing persons uh, episode uh, to get some faces out there. There's a lot of missing people and it breaks our heart. And so we want to push that out there as much as we can. So if you feel the need, please share the missing people video so we can get faces out there and find all of these missing babies uh, that the parents are de desperately looking for. So today uh, we're going to be episode three of Missing Persons, and it's going to be on Caleb Harris, and he is from Corpus Christi, Texas. He's been missing since March 4th, and just a mysterious disappearance. And so we wanted to get his information out there so we can share that and hopefully bring some peace to his parents and bring him back home. So at this point, let's get started. All right. Texas college student Caleb Harris has been missing for over a month since he left his off-campus Corpus Christi apartment in the early morning of March 4th to pick up his food delivery order. Harris, a 21-year-old student at Texas A&M Corpus Christi, Corpus Christi, had been in contact with friends and family over Snapchat between 2 and 2.45 a.m. just before he left to pick up his Uber Eats order and vanished with his phone. His wallet and keys were left behind, according to his parents. That seems to be the only items that were missing, his father, Randy Harris, told Fox and Friends on Wednesday. We have his keys. We have his truck locked. The dog's back in the apartment. There's nothing else missing. Later in the day of March 4th, Harris's roommates noticed the food order placed outside their door as instructed, but he was nowhere to be found, according to the Corpus Christi Police Department. It's 2024 and the odds of someone disappearing without a trace, without anyone knowing anything are slim to none. We just feel like the word hasn't gotten out to enough people and we do believe somebody knows something, family spokesperson Tony Mathis told Fox and Friends. And I do completely agree with that. I mean, you think in today's society we have cameras everywhere like every step we take every phone call we make and we can't find this young man i mean they do have video footage of him but then it goes dark after a certain area at his apartment complex and there was i think one site um, from a homeless person that did see him walking barefooted to the main drag off of the apartment complex but nothing after that and so that's almost scary uh, that he just completely vanished vanished into thin air literally um well yeah i mean we've had you know in our subdivision we have cameras everywhere so when we've had things happen everyone checks their cameras it's i guess the apartment was kind of off to itself maybe yes. that's why there's not so many cameras everywhere yeah, I think there was a long road going from the apartment complex to the main drive. There was actually a Snapchat he did right. of, a, of a small of bridge. bridge. Yeah, and so I think in that area, there's kind of trees and high grass. So, I mean, other than a deer cam, there's probably not going to be much footage, but there's not even a deer well, yeah, cam and out that's there. Not gonna be no on one's the hunting out of it. Yeah. Right. So it is concerning, unfortunately, um, that at a certain point, he just completely goes missing off the face of the earth. With no shoes on. With no shoes on. Yeah. So Randy Harris also mentioned that his family spoke with Gabby Petito's father, Joseph Petito. He was wonderful to talk with us and gave us some advice, Randy said. Police established an updated timeline for the missing student and avid fisherman last week based on interviews with the people closest to Harris. So it goes as Sunday, March 3rd, he was at his apartment, 12.56 a.m. March 4th, the doorbell cam sees Harris. 2.30 a.m. on March 4th, Harris places his delivery order. And then at 2.44 a.m. March 4th, Harris sends a Snapchat video. And that's of him walking his 
newly adopted dog. They had just gotten that dog that day. Yes. And him and his roommates were outside on camera mm -hmm. walking the dog. So 3.03 a.m. March 4th, Harrison's Snapchat photo. At 3.12 a.m. March 4th, last known connection to cell tower. Um, at 3.20 a.m. March 4th, Uber Eats driver delivers order. At 11 a.m. March 4th, roommate finds the delivery order outside the front door. And then he was reported missing. Yeah. I mean, it's just unbelievable to me that there's so many, you know, times there's a time span there, but there's also a huge time lap or a huge time gap in that. And I know you had an observation about the pinging. Well, yes, they, it does show that his phone was turned off. Let's see, I'm looking back and I, we will put the timeline in. It shows that his phone pinged after it was turned off. And if you guys know how that can happen, because I would like to know how that can happen. How can it ping a location down the street if the phone right. was turned off? So if you guys know, can y'all comment below? And not only that, he, a Snapchat went through after his phone was turned off. So they're thinking it was like... Sorry, guys. Floating up in the around, air, floating you know, around in orbit, <laughs> waiting to be sent. So, but with the phones turned off, yeah, we're not real familiar ping? with how that works. How, how does, does it ping, ping if it's how turned does it send off? It? How does it send that Snapchat? Maybe if you hit send, it can just. I can understand that more because, like with a text message, it can send it. It can even send multiples, even though you didn't do it. That's I can true. So I can understand that before I can a phone pinging a location. How can right. it ping a location after it's turned off? Yeah, it's real confusing on that. And again, he had his phone when he left this last time, but he didn't take his keys or his wallet and his truck was left at the apartment. So he was walking almost to meet someone. Uh, and I'm sure that the police have looked at his phone information. I'm sure there's a lot of information they've not released to the public, which right. is completely understandable at this point. There's always information they know that they don't release. Right. So it's questionable. Was he hanging around waiting for his Uber Eats to come or was he actually going to meet somebody? And that's, that's my main con curiosity. With no shoes point. on? Would he with, be meeting someone with, with no, no shoes, shoes on? on? I mean, yeah. I can understand walking out in the parking lot, waiting for your, Uber Eats order with no shoes on. It's right. late at night, early in the morning. Right. Okay, I want my food. But why walk so far? Yeah. Or even to meet someone, you'd at least throw some flip-flops on, right? For sure. I, I, I would, know. personally. I know some people walk barefooted. I, I don't. So to me, if it's kind of chilly outside and it's extremely foggy. At least throw some flip-flops yeah, on. Yeah, throw some flip-flops on because it was very foggy. foggy that specific evening. Um, so to me, it would be moist and wet and, and I would at least throw something on my feet, but his, his flip flops were found in his home. So I don't think he was planning on being out too late or gone too long at this point. Right. Which he, he didn't even take his keys. Right. Or his wallet, yeah. which is what you usually throw on shoes, keys, wallet. If you're going to meet someone, go somewhere, right. Be out too long. Yeah. Um, or even tell someone like, Hey guys, I'm going. Yeah, I mean, he had roommates. Yeah. yeah. He had roommates. And to my understanding, he, he communicated with his family on things like that. So, well, the police said nothing appeared to be out of the ordinary and the three young men returned to Harris's apartment. Their mutual friend departed shortly thereafter. Harris's second roommate says he is going to bed and Harris tells him that he's going to stay up and order his lunch for the next day. He sends a Snapchat to his sister showing walking the puppy through what appears to be the parking lot of his apartment complex called the cottages. Harris sends another Snapchat to a friend showing a small bridge over a drainage ditch on the 1900 block of Ennis Jocelyn within a few hundred feet of the entrance to his apartment. They also said that 
it's a bridge, but it wasn't, it was maybe a foot deep. Yeah. It wasn't, wasn't like deep. a, you know, a lot of water where he could have slipped in and something happened to him. It's a drainage ditch. Yeah, it's a drainage ditch. Specifically for rain. It, if they're getting some flooding, then it is known to get kind of high, like Higher, four but, feet. But at the time was it was not, only about a foot deep. Yeah, it wasn't. But it, And they did search that area uh, and didn't find anything of Caleb there. An Uber Eats driver delivers Harris's food to his front door per his request, where it remains until the next morning. Harris's roommate finds his Uber Eats sitting outside the door of their apartment building. They also see his truck parked outside their apartment, as well as his wallet and keys were inside the apartment, but they do not see Harris. Caleb's roommates, who described him as a homebody and a creature of habit, immediately became alarmed by Caleb's absence. After searching for Caleb by themselves for a short time, the roommates called the CCPD, Corpus Christi Police Department, to report Harris missing. Also, they they questioned the Uber driver. She said she only saw one car mm -hmm. leaving the apartment complex while she was there. She never saw Harris. They found the person in the car that she saw. He was leaving his girlfriend's apartment and driving back to San Antonio, San Antonio mm -hmm. to go to work. So they have questioned everyone that was seen. They didn't see anything out of the ordinary. And that driver did say that he did not see Harris when he left out. So, and the Uber driver didn't see him either. So yeah, no one, had, no, no one saw him no out one there. No one saw him at all. The initial responding officer checked local hospitals to see if any unidentified people matching Harris's description had been checked in earlier that morning. Authorities had also searched in and around his apartment and found no apparent signs of a struggle or a possible vehicular accident in the area. More investigators responded to the scene and conducted an intensive and large-scale search of the surrounding area. Police said Harris's friends and roommates had been very cooperative. They also interviewed the female Uber Eats driver who delivered the food in, outside of his apartment. The driver told detectives that she was driving alone that night and did not see Caleb or anyone else um, at or near the apartment complex. Detectives have submitted electronic search warrant requests, observation requests, and subpoenas for electric uh, information in the weeks since Harris disappeared. The search for Caleb has been expanded into the New Braunfels and San Antonio, Texas areas. And that's why I say I think that the detectives actually have more information than they're releasing at this point because Corpus Christi is quite a bit of ways away from the San Antonio, New Braunfels area. Now, I know that it's a couple his, of hours. Yeah, his family is from New Braunfels. Mm -hmm. um, so it sort of makes sense, but that's a long stretch to be searching in that area. I think the police have done an excellent job in their investigation and searching, and they've been very good with the family. Actually, uh, Randy Harris, Caleb's father, said that they have done everything that they could possibly be doing, that yeah. they're doing an amazing job. Yeah, I think that is excellent. Um, kudos to you guys out yes. there, Corpus Christi PD. Y'all are doing an excellent job. We need that up. everywhere. Yeah, we need it everywhere. Um, we heard an interview with his dad, Randy Harris, who said that Caleb is studying environmental science and he wants to become a game warden when he graduates. He was a stellar student. In Caleb's downtime, he loves to duck hunt, go fishing, and listen to country music. So this is a guy that's used to being outdoors, Yeah, loves being outdoors. Yeah. Randy said Caleb signed his lease. He was preparing to go fishing the next day. I can't even imagine what his parents are going through right now. I mean, yeah, <sighs> just not even knowing where to start at this point. I mean, you know, to start at the apartment complex, but when you're a month in, there's like a never ending battlefield of where to, where to start, but then where to stop. And I guess you well, just don't his, stop till he's found. His roommates were friends of his from New Braunfels. So yeah, they, they grew up together. They knew each other. They had another friend there um, that's wanting to go to school with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like they wouldn't 
I mean, they should yeah. have an idea of where he was. Yeah. Well, they were all lifelong friends and in from the description, more like brothers and sisters than just friends. They literally had a bond right. like that. So this is devastating, not only to his family, but to his close friends as well. Um, and I'm sure that they're questioning every step they took that day, every conversation they had with Caleb. Um, and, and of course, I'm sure that they're, they're blaming themselves, but there's nothing that anyone could have done at this point. Right. So yeah, it's so sad. Uh, Caleb has brown hair and brown eyes. He stands at 5'11 and weighs around 180 pounds. He's 21 years old. He was last seen wearing white clothes and a baseball, ca I'm sorry, a white shirt, green mm -hmm. pants and a baseball cap. Yeah. It looked to me in the cam footage, um, it was a white polo and a white uh, baseball cap. Yeah. Well, it, the the uh, actual footage that I saw, the last known footage of him, it it's a button down yeah. um, halfway. Now, his shorts look white in this video, but of course, a cam. I think a, someone a, said a they web, were green. Yeah. A teal. webcam with lighting can kind of, you know, can be disorienting with exactly what colors he was wearing. Mm hmm there's a $50,000 reward being offered for information that leads to the safe return of Caleb. There's also a GoFundMe set up under Help Find Caleb Harris. It was set for $100,000, and as of today, they have raised $65,994. Anyone with information about Harris's disappearance is asked to contact the Corpus Christi Police Department at 361-886-2840 or 361-886-2600. Tipsters can also contact University Police at 361-825-4444. Yeah, if anybody knows anything, um, sometimes we're just going about our day or, or our night and maybe something catches our eye and you just don't think that it's important. And sometimes we get our days and nights mixed up on when yeah. this could have happened. Um, so if there's anything that triggers your thought process, or even if you're questioning it, at least reach out to the police. That could help this case tremendously. You never know what information can help, um, but we need to find him and bring him home. I and mean, we need more game wardens out here in Texas. Okay. Yeah, we <laughs> but yeah, we need more of those. And so we need to get him back home. I think he's an upstanding young man. I don't think anything nefarious here was going on. I think he was just going about his usual activity. And I'm, you know, my theory at this point is that he was meeting up with someone. He was either waiting on his Uber Eats or someone texted him and said, Hey, can you meet me here for a second? And I think that's why, hence the reason why he didn't have his shoes on. It was just going to be a quick jot out there to talk to someone. And then something went wrong. It's the only thing I can think. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only thing that makes sense to me. Our thoughts and prayers are with, uh, Caleb's family and friends. I know they're heartbroken and yeah. I, I just can't even imagine my heart goes out to them. Absolutely. Our prayers and our thoughts go to you. And, and again, friends, if you could just share this information, uh, you can't share too much, just get his face out there because we don't just want Texas to be looking for him, but we want Oklahoma, Louisiana, Arkansas, Tennessee, any of the states to just be looking for him because he's not your average looking guy. He's that he is actually he stands a little taller um, and he has a unique face. And, and I think that um, that someone would notice him. So we need to just push this information out there and, and let's bring Caleb home. It's very important. So, guys, until next time, hit that like button at the bottom of the screen and subscribe for True Crime content every week, which is completely free. Free. Also, share it with your friends, help get these faces out there, and most importantly, see, see the, good the good and, and stay, stay imperfectly, imperfectly perfect. perfect. Until Bye, next guys. time. Bye. Bye.